Right, so here we are in Flight Sim 2020 in the brand new Aerosoft Twin Otter. Still in beta, of course, but we're going to just take a short trip today. I'm going to fly an ILS approach into Manchester, which is a flight I've done several times before, but I just want to do this by way of comparison, direct comparison with previous versions of the Twin Otter and of course the Sim. The Sim just looks absolutely gorgeous in, um, well, everywhere, but particularly in this vicinity. This time of day is very flattering in terms of uh, how it's going to look. The sun's just coming up. In fact, it's a little bit too dark in a minute. Let's just see if we can uh, tweak that a little bit. Um, that's just slightly brighter. Um, so we're at Barton. We're going to take off, fly to Manchester, and then do the ILS to runway 06 left. So we're going to set that up in the sim. This looks very familiar if you're a user of the Twin Otter Extended. That panel is very similar. I'll probably comment on some of that as we go. Some of it's deceptive, it looks the same, but isn't. Some of it uh, is different. The most notable difference there is we've got a GNS 530 and a 430 below it. We're not really going to do too much with that. So in fact, let's set up for the ILS. Nav 2, we're going to use the VOR over here, the secondary VOR. We're going to set that up. I've already set that up to 113.55. That's the Manchester MCT VOR, which we're going to use to fly the outbound course. We're going to do that on a radial 234. Um, I've got this hooked up to my hardware, by and large. So that's two, three, one, two, three, four. So we're going to fly out on that radio from Manchester, which is the initial approach fix. If we set up the HSI as well, which means we're going to switch to VLOC, we're going to set up the final approach course, which is 054. Try that again. One, two, three, four. Press the CDI button to go back to GPS. Now then, we can only fly this approach officially if we've got DME. We don't have a DME receiver in the new Twin Otter. It used to be uh, down here somewhere. You, you probably noticed that we've got a new box in here as well, which is the Bendix King KAP 140 autopilot. That's the primary autopilot, well, it's the only autopilot in this aircraft, which is a big difference from the previous version. Um, we'll say more about the autopilot as, as we get underway. We do need to set up that um, ILS on NAV1. We need 109.5. Switch that in. If we go on to VLOC again, we should see that come alive. That's okay, so there we are. So that's what we need. Everything's set up. Well, we need uh, pre select. Uh, Altitude that we need to be at at the initial approach fix. Which now pre selecting the altitude, we, we, we would have done it up here, and in fact, we'll see it up here if I dial it. We need uh, 3000 feet. We're actually dialing this in on the Bendix King cap 140. If you look at those numbers changing as I twiddle my knob, so to speak, uh, 3000 that's what we want. And the final thing we're going to do is. Um, and this is, sorry, I started to talk about the DME and then stopped. Because we don't have the DME, which we need for this procedure, we're going to fake it by distance shown on the GPS. So if we dial in Manchester as a direct two, using the default GNS 530 here from FS 2020, you can use the the free, uh, I forgot what it's called now, but the free upgrade for that, which does add a lot of improvements. I'm not doing that in the interest of just keeping um, as close to the raw beta version as we can, for testing purposes. Okay, let's get airborne. We've got flaps 10 and uh, then we'll do talk more as we go. So this is Barton, which is a beautiful airport, default of course in the sim. Uh, 
Um, we're not really going to take much of a look at it today, we're just going to get airborne and get this procedure underway, not accelerating very quickly here. That's enough. And then we're going to kind of hook it round to the right pretty soon, get the flaps up. I'm not, ooh, yeah. I'm not flying with real weather today, just in the interests of, um, well, keeping things simple. <laughs> and uh, we want the weather to look nice as well, so we just pre-selected that. I'm going to go onto autopilot here, we're on GPS, I can click nav hold, um, doesn't hold that like the old autopilot would have held that attitude, so we've gone straight to, I'm not sure about that, I think actually it's supposed to go into, it's supposed to hold the, the vertical speed if you're in a ascent and you enable the autopilot, but anyway, we're going to just hit, um, dial the vertical speed up a little bit, go up to, let's say, 1500 feet per minute, and we've had that altitude pre-selected, so we should get altitude alerts and so on. In fact, there's the altitude alert. That's a different chime than we had in the Twin Otter Extended. And that's because it's actually coming from this cap 140. Um, this autopilot here, the AP106, unfortunately, although it appears on the panel, it's it's entirely non-functional in this new version, other than as a kind of echo of the cap 140. Now that doesn't always make sense, but I mean you can press these buttons. Um, in preference to the little tiny ones down here and in fact the indications will be echoed as well um, you can pre-select the altitude up here and we do see the altitude alert here but crucially these buttons are well, what used to be buttons there's some argument about whether these are just indicators or should be buttons over to the left for the MDA altitude alert and go around those are non-functional in the new sim, in the new version. But the Cat 140 is a good autopilot, it does everything the old one used to do and and more. It's just a little bit, it's just different, you have to figure out how to make sense of that. Flying on GPS towards Manchester, Manchester Airport right ahead, it's right into the sun unfortunately so we can't quite see that. Clearly but if we look on our fake DME two miles distant, we we should see as we come overhead the airport, the VOR will start to move and we want to turn on the outbound radio. Let's switch to heading mode now. I'm doing it down here, but it is reflected up here as well. And we're starting to turn outbound. Um, Hide the yoke, by the way, that's a new feature. Couldn't do that in the, the old version. It's kind of handy because it, it does obscure the instruments <laughs> from the pilot seat. Um, again, I've got everything mapped more or less to my hardware, which is very much more convenient. All right, so we should be flying out roughly on a course of 234. We've got 233 there. Let's give it, it looks like we're a little bit to the left of course. If we give it 10 degrees to the right, we'll just um, try and centre that up. So we're going to fly outbound to a DME of 11 miles from the MCT VOR, which is not coincident with the ILS. It's about a mile further down the runway. Now on the old flight sim default GNS, well G500 I think it's called, 
and the fake GNS 530 in the Aerosoft Twin Ultra Extended. The ILS did have a distance readout, which was, which is inaccurate. You shouldn't have that. That's that's gone from the the new default. So so in that sense, uh, it's more realistic but less convenient. Than what I'm talking about. Right. So we're centered up now on that radial. We'll go back to uh, two, three, four heading. Pretty much no wind up here today, so we don't have to do too much worrying about that. Um, looking at this terrain, just gorgeous default terrain in the vicinity of Manchester in the north of England. If you don't know where that is, absolutely beautiful. You could do, you could navigate this completely visually with a map if we weren't flying on instruments today. So six and a half miles out. What else to tell you about this new cockpit? Um, so we've got, as I say, we've got a new autopilot, got an extra GPS. I haven't really explored this. Um, what we can do is two of them. Some of this is still work in progress, so we might see some glitches, some things that aren't working completely 100% correct. Again, if you're familiar with this region, you probably know what these buildings are down here. It's like some industrial estate <laughs> down there. Um, okay, nine miles out. When we get to 11 miles out, we're going to make a 45 degree turn to the left, fly for a minute, then reverse that, and that should set us up for an intercept of the ILS. Just coming up to that now. Let's set that up on if we come off heading mode and we just set up that um, on the heading bug. And there's our 11 miles, so we go into heading hold now. It should turn us outbound. Right about now, we want to switch to V lock on the GNS 530 just so we don't forget to do that and we'll switch on to approach mode. Okay, wings level start the clock. So we go for a minute in this direction. So there's Manchester up to the top right of that display there, EGCC. Half minutes ago, if we come off heading, then again we'll just for precision we'll um, pre-select that. Reversal course. Alright, so there's a minute, so we're going to go back onto head and hold. Now, this cockpit, as I say, looks very familiar to users of the Twin Otter Extended. I think, in terms of wear and tear and fidelity. It's done to a higher standard. It's not. I mean, it, the old one was fantastic. You know, it's really nice cockpit anyway. So, it's arguable how much improvement you can make. But I think there is a consensus that uh, it's it's an awful lot better. Select approach mode now. So we're rolling out on that. 45 degree, more or less, intercept. Coming up fast. Then we've got nav, uh, localise the capture. So you've got flight director bars on the on the ADI. I haven't really spent a lot of time with those um, to see if they behave strictly the same as they do in Twin Ultra Extended. There'll be some differences because they're not, you know, they're working off a different autopilot. Don't forget. 
to that again all those up AP 106 appears in the center of the screen it's not really doing anything other than where possible echoing some of the settings on this it's quite annoying that this Bendix King autopilot is all the way down here it's very small I'm flying this on a 23 inch 1080p monitor at the moment and it's also way out of your line of sight so it's if you're using them I'm not using the mouse to select these buttons it's pretty impossible to do that not well, impossible but very tricky um, I have got a zoom set up on my on the button there so I can just um, toggle that in and out but with track IR the track IR, uh, you know it's fiddly at the best of times track IRs in the current version of the sim got some limitations which 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 are you can't pause it if you pause it um, basically it, it, the sim recenters it until you unpause it and then you have to switch it back on in the sim so if you were to zoom in and position your head nicely and pause great <coughs> So we've got the glide slope captured as well. Uh, what was that beep? I'm not sure what that beep was actually. Well, maybe altitude alert again. So we're just going to ride this down to the ground. It's uh, in one sense it'd be nice if the weather was slightly murkier. Um, just visually speaking, let's see if we can make that happen. Uh, we'll leave it alone. Um, we'll come off autopilot at the last minute and do a bit of a manual landing, but uh, this is not really going to be a, a video about how the thing handles. One thing of note the engine spool up time is much improved. We're still working off the default Asobo turboprop model, which is said still to be somewhat lacking in fidelity. But in terms of response time, you know that lag spooling up a turboprop in FSX or prepared was was very very much um, in the way. Flaps turn now. I'm going to come off autopilot and just fly this to the ground now. <laughs> Alright, we should be pitching for about 80, 80 knots. We've got a... What do you call that? GPWS with call outs and uh, alerts. As well. Okay, power to idle. Don't have much um, feedback when we touch down. The sounds are all still under construction in this beta version so um, we don't have a touchdown sound or we have a very 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 <laughs> quiet touchdown sound taxiing on the ground so much better than it was in prepared with the twin otter extended that's absolute relief so here we are Manchester new twin otter first sight and there'll be more to come.